I'm Adam Pritchard, and this is a Pastime News Bite. When I went to sleep last night, all was right with the world. The sky was blue, fish swam in the ocean, and the name Brontosaurus was as dead as a doornail. But when I woke up, none of that was true anymore. Okay, most of that was still true. But according to the news... Brontosaurus is a valid name again, and the internet seems to have exploded about the resurrection of Brontosaurus. But what exactly does it mean when a name comes back from the grave? Now, for decades, the name Brontosaurus has been out of use in paleontological circles, but Brontosaurus has made a lot of appearances in popular culture. The original Lost World film, King Kong, the Flintstones stopped to get Bronto burgers, even though the name wasn't used scientifically. When I was young, I definitely remember I was that kid into kindergarten when the teacher brought up Brontosaurus. My hand shot up immediately, and I was like, excuse me, uh, it's actually a Patasaurus? And this surprises no one. But for a long time, I didn't know why scientists made that choice. Now, this all relates to a discipline called taxonomy. Taxonomy, which involves the naming and categorization of different groups. Every species that a scientist discovers gets two separate names, a genus and a species. The most famous is probably Tyrannosaurus rex, or Homo sapiens. The genus name isn't something that every species gets. A genus is actually a group of really closely related species. It's sort of a subjective choice that scientists make how different species need to be to receive a new genus. Now, for how this actually relates to Brontosaurus, I turn to our resident historian at pastime, Matt Bortz. During the 1870s, there was a bone rush in the American West as paleontologists competed with each other to name as many fossils as they could. One of the titans of this collecting effort was Othniel Marsh. And Marsh collected two separate pelvises, and he named one Brontosaurus, the thunder lizard, and the other Apatosaurus, the deceptive lizard. Later, in 1903, Elmer Riggs took a close look at Marsh's two pelvies and decided that there really weren't enough differences between them. Here we have a transcript of one of his letters. Or, at least, a paraphrase of it. My dearest wife... I have taken a close examination of Marsh's two titanic dinosaurs, and I have decided that Brontosaurus and Apatosaurus share too much in common to warrant two separate genera. Therefore, because Apatosaurus was named before Brontosaurus, I must sink the Thunder Lizard. From this time forward, Brontosaurus will rather be a species of Apatosaurus. Apatosaurus excelsius, who is closely related to Apatosaurus Ajax. I do hope someday that the world does not judge me for my choice, nor my observations. I also hope that toy companies in the future will refrain from using the word Brontosaurus rather than Apatosaurus. I'm sure right now in 1903, this won't be a problem one century hence. Elmer Riggs, 1903. And ever since that time, we've had both Apatosaurus ajax and Apatosaurus excelsus. And these two species have generally been held to be close enough that they didn't really need a genus for Apatosaurus excelsus. They didn't need Brontosaurus. But now there's a new opinion on the issue. From the journal Peer J, a specimen-level phylogenetic analysis and taxonomic revision of the Diplodocidae, Dinosauria sauropoda by Emmanuel Schopp of the Universidad Nova de Lisboa in Portugal and his colleagues. This study is huge. I can make a terrible joke about how it's as big as the dinosaurs in it. This study represents an attempt to take every specimen of a sauropod family called the Diplodocids. The Diplodocids. Animals that sort of have a long horse-like face, pencil-shaped teeth, and a long tail with a whip-like end, examine their anatomy, and determine how they interrelate to one another. And through restudy of almost a hundred diplodocid specimens, some of which have been sitting in the museum collections they're in for over 150 years, Dr. Schopp and his colleagues present a brand new hypothesis for how these organisms are interrelated. Now, these have been studied in the past, 
This is not the first attempt to understand the interrelationships of sauropod dinosaurs, but it's the most detailed study yet. And it's discovered a whole series of new anatomical traits that could be used to understand how these animals relate to one another. And one tiny part of this vast study is the recognition of a lot of new anatomical features that differentiate the material of the original Lepatosaurus specimens with the original Brontosaurus specimens. And using that differentiation as a justification, Dr. Schopp and his colleagues resurrect the name Brontosaurus to represent those specimens. Funny, bringing back Brontosaurus is only a small part of this gigantic study. This study is a vast collection of anatomical data, and it shows a new hypothesis of how the anatomy of these long-necked beasts evolved through time. And some of it suggests that we're actually underestimating the number of species that we have in the fossil record hanging out in these museum collections. Like I said, some of which have been there for well over a century. And that includes the original Brontosaurus and Apatosaurus. The first story I read on this had a headline that was something like, Brontosaurus was a real dinosaur, which made me roll my eyes because of course it was a real dinosaur. The fossils never went away. The name changed. And after reading the article, I scrolled down to the comments section out of morbid curiosity and read the first comment. It said, I'm glad that's settled. And reading that made me want to reach my hands into the computer, grab the person by the shoulders and say, no, no, it's not settled. And that's the best part. This is an ongoing question. We are still learning more about these dinosaurs that have been dead for 150 million years and in our museums for 150 years. There is still so much to discover, even about the very basic construction of these animals, how they are related, how they evolved through time, and indeed how best to categorize them with names. But never forget, no matter what we call it, the animal you picture when you hear the name Brontosaurus, was real. And the best part about it is that we still have so much to discover about every aspect of its life. And this new study is one more stepping stone to a greater knowledge of past time.